Hi everyone, I'm Mad Hildebrandt and this is the Get Mad Show. Today, our guest is Idalia Lechuga Tena and she is running for State Senate District 20 here in New Mexico. Let's go. So welcome to the show, Idalia. We're very happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. So um, I want to just leap right here into this and give you um, a minute to, um, to tell all of your constituents a little bit about you that makes you human and not just the candidate up there. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Well, um, my name is Idalia. I am the only Idalia in politics in the whole state of New Mexico for any party. Uh, so that's easy to remember. Um, and I became the first naturalized woman from Mexico to serve in the House of Representatives in the history of our state. Um, I represented District 21 in the House of Representatives, with, which sits partly in this Senate district that I'm running in now. Um, I was raised here in Albuquerque. I'm a product of our public schools. I graduated from the University of New Mexico uh, with international studies in Mexico, Spain, and France. I'm fluent in four languages, um, English, Spanish, French, and Italian, uh, which all are spoken in this district. When I was door knocking, I would speak those four languages in one day, um, you know, when I was uh, asking for people's votes uh, door to door. Um, and I just think that's beautiful. Um, so I'm a proud immigrant. I'm a small business owner, um, homeowner here in this district. I'm a rancher. We have, um, you know, I'm from Mexico, so we have ranches in Mexico. I'm a community activist involved in our neighborhood association and many boards um, like Meals on Wheels, uh, Hispanic Roundtable, Hispanic Heritage Committee. Um, and I'm a violinist. I love classical music. I, I also paint as a hobby. And I have a 14-year-old blind chihuahua. Her name is Cochinada, which, but we call her Coach. In Spanish, Cochinada means dirty thing. And, uh, and, uh, but I love her very much. And um, she even walked down my, my uh, you know, the aisle at, at, at my wedding with a little cute dress, <laughs> which I have a picture if you want to see. Um, and, um, and um, you know, I, I have the experience that it takes to serve in the, as, as your next state senator. Um, I have the experience, the diversity, the progress, the change that we need in the New Mexico legislature. I already have a voting record that I fought for higher pay for our teachers, better health care for the most needy, mm -hmm. more job creation, work to fix our crime crisis. Um, and, you know, I'm a proud Democrat who's pro-business for our unions and for our working families. Um, you know, I want your voice to, me, to be my voice. I want you to call me or text me anytime. <laughs> On my cell phone, 505-550-3868, because I need your advice and guidance, because I will be the one representing your interest. And I always want an open door with all, all the constituents. Um, again, I bring the experience, progress, change, and diversity that we need in the, to the New Mexico Senate. Um, um, we do need more women, and we need women of color in the Senate. Uh, I invite you to visit my website, idalia4nm.com. Um, I hope that I can count on your vote, and uh, I invite you to join my campaign to start working for change. So one of the beautiful things about New Mexico and, um, and, and your district is just the, the amount of variety, the, the uh, diversity that we have in our population, and, and it is so imperative that we see that same sort of diversity when we're looking at our um, our uh, elected um, representatives, the people that are that are representing us, us that they actually um, uh, reflect our communities better than we've done so far. And so it's exciting to see um, women, women of color, um, uh, men of color, you know, just various people. Um, you know, running for, for these seats. And uh, yeah. uh, so it is wonderful to see you doing that and uh, running again for another seat. Um, Thank you so much. It, yes. Um, one of the things that I want to turn to immediately here, um, because this is the, the thing that's happening to everybody and the reason that, that we're all at home right now is um, 
COVID-19, this pandemic that that's putting um, so much pressure on our uh, on our communities and on our state, on our nation, uh, on the entire world. Um, so, if you could talk a little bit about COVID nineteen, and especially, you know, we've there it, it has issues also with um, with in economic recovery that that I know that you've got um, plans for your district as, and for the state. Thank you. So, the number one thing is that you know I I do hope everyone's staying safe practicing social distancing, washing your hands. What we're going through is um, unprecedented. It's unfortunate. There's been a lot of deaths um, and it, it, we're gonna have the most challenging economic time in the history of our state and maybe in the history of, uh, of, of uh, the world. So how, as a state senator, how do we address the economic impact that COVID-19 um, has is going to have and it you know it's already happening so we we're gonna have a budget shortfall um of at least two billion dollars so if you think about it the new mexico budget is 7.2 billion that budget is estimated included the oil and gas royalties that we get which is about 39 percent um, of new mexico um, uh, and we're not going to have that because that's expected uh you know the the, the 7.2 billion budget is built on an assumption that oil is going to be trading above 50 dollars a barrel well that's not happening it's trading negatively right now so what does that mean those two to three billion dollars are not going to come in so what do we do do we you know and also so we're not only we're not going to have the oil and gas we're not going to have grt the gross receipts tax that's also two to three billion dollars annually that we're not going to have so we're going to be in a very very tight tight budget very challenging times what can we do well we have the reserves um the new mexico reserves is about 25 percent of the 7.2 billion um that's just about you know 2.8 billion dollars do we tap into our reserves or do we do is the federal government um, going to bail us out? Is the federal government going to um, provide uh, financial recovery? We can have a dialogue with our federal delegation, you know, in the White House. And mm -hmm. is the federal government going to help, or are we going to have to raise taxes? And those, you know, as an economist and and as a as a former legislator that served in the tax committee. Um, it is important to understand the budget because we are going to have extremely challenging times and our budget, you know, our shortfall, two billion, right. it's going to be, it's just going to be sad. And, and um, this is where somebody with the experience, you know, needs to, I, I, I hope that I, that I do win and I hope to have a, a, a seat in the finance committee for the Senate. Right. So. And, and that's, that's challenging time. Yeah, and that's important. That that is that is a valid point. The thought that you know somebody that that does have experience, um, um, and that understands some of the issues and has dealt with some of those when as we're coming into these trying times after, um, uh, especially with the loss of our oil and gas income for the state. Yeah. So, um, and we'll we'll come back and touch on that in a few minutes. But first, uh, because again, the thing that's one of the things that's at the top of everybody's mind because of COVID is is healthcare, and I know that you have some uh, pretty strong feelings for that to help our seniors, to help um, prescription drugs and various um, things that that you're thinking um, that and and we really need them anyway. So if you can give us your thoughts on that. Well, healthcare is a big, uh, you know, one of the main issues. I heard door knocking um, in Senate District 20. You know, we have um, we have a high Medicaid population. Um, we need to make sure that we have we, we lower the the prescription drugs um, and, and and think outside the box. We're going to be in an economic uh, catastrophe, and um, the drug companies charge way too much for prescription drugs. So what can we do about that? I have a lot of seniors in this district and that's one of their main concerns. So what I'm thinking is we can think outside the box. You know how we, um, we did that legislation, um, we passed that legislation where 
medications could be imported from Canada. Uh, why mm -hmm. can't, we're a border state, New Mexico. Why can't we do the same with Mexico? I would be happy to start that initiative uh, where we can explore if we can import drugs at a cheaper price uh, from Mexico to New Mexico, start a pilot program um, as a dual citizen, I would be happy to make all of the connections and, and be the, the lead on this. Because like I said, we need to think outside the box. We're, we're, gonna, be, we're gonna be tied, not only financially, but you know, until we have a vaccine, we need to, we need to protect everyone, especially the most vulnerable, this, our seniors, right. um, you know, uh, people with behavioral health. Um, I have a uh, brother-in-law who has schizophrenia. Um, and we need to protect the most vulnerable. We need to make sure that the Medicaid behavioral health uh, budget is fully funded. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that that money, uh, the 900, uh, uh, to protect the 900,000 people that are right. in Medicaid right, right now, stay protected out of the 2.1 million that we have in our state. That's significant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. when I was a state representative, I did sponsor a memorial which was to prevent Medicaid fraud and abuse. So we can look into that too, to make oh, sure yeah. that monies are not being wasted. Um, and then right. um, w another quick last thing is, we need to protect and honor our seniors. Um, a lot of what I heard door knocking was the social security tax. You know, taxing social security mm -hmm. benefits for the seniors, so pretty much taxing twice. Um, I think this is a regressive tax. I think that we need to get rid of it. Um, I would be happy to co-sponsor or sponsor this legislation to get rid of this regressive tax so that we can attract right. um, more, more uh, retirees to our state because our state is absolutely beautiful. We have so right. much to offer. And, um, and I've so, heard a lot yeah. about that. You. you know, the idea that um, we could attract more seniors to our state as as particularly right now, as New Mex or as Arizona is getting hotter, and um, uh, a lot of those people could then very easily come over into our state Absolutely. as a as a haven. But we have to make it attractive to them, and so the yeah. the idea of of um, uh, repealing that tax um, would be very uh, beneficial, I think, economically I think so. for our state. Yeah. Well, New Mexico is only one of 13 states that tax Social Security benefits yeah. twice. And we have the second highest tax against seniors in the country. Right, right. And, so, I, and yeah, as I'm, I'm aware, as, as people talk about, you know, as they get closer to retirement and they start talking about that, and a lot of those people, just like we think about that brain drain of our children, we mm -hmm. actually have a, something of a drain on our elders as well as they leave the state for, for um, places that, that are, uh, you know, just across the border into Texas, you know, where, where they can, um, uh, you know, keep more of their, keep, really keep their money mm -hmm. and rather than having it taxed. Um, one of the other things that I know um, as we're talking about, about um, people needing, needing more of this, just help, is public safety. And I know that that has been, you know, it's just been a topic of, uh, that just recurs and recurs here in New Mexico. And um, please give us your thoughts on that. So public safety, I think was number three um, a, a issue. And unfortunately, um, we are in a midst of a crime epidemic, not only in Senate District 20, but in Albuquerque. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate. I remember I grew up here. I remember growing up as a little girl in the city. We never experienced the volume of uh, crime uh, that we're experiencing right now. And um, it is very unfortunate. The number one issue in Senate District 20 is property crime. And unfortunately, my husband and I have been victims of it. We were at Mass um, at Prince of Peace just down the street uh, here on Tramway. And during mass, my husband's um, truck got broken into during mass. And, um, and it's property crime. So it's cars being broken into, homes being broken into. And um, it, we need to do something about it. When, I, um, you know, when I'm in the legislature, I'm going to make sure that we uh, have uh, that APD uh, and the sheriff's department both have the resources that they need to help 
fight crime. So Senate District 20 has the city and the county both. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? We have to work with both, with county officials, with city officials, which I've worked for, with before. I, I have good relationship with them, you know, from, from before right. and from being a community activist. So yes, we definitely need more cops in the streets. Um, I don't think it should take, you know, three hours to respond to, to, a, uh, to, a, to a, uh, uh, for a police officer to respond to an emergency call. Um, mm -hmm. We need more detectives investigating the crimes and the murders that, and that we already must fight to solve. Um, and we need a very serious cooperation between county, city, and, and as your next state senator. Mm -hmm. um, I, and and I, would, I, I want to start a committee where we meet monthly, kind of treat it like a board. And mm -hmm. I, in Senate District 20, I want to have um, neighbors come, uh, officials from the city of Albuquerque, from Bernalillo County, uh, state uh, representatives so that we can work together because this is going to be a challenging time and right. we need unity. And this is not about politics. This is not about pure Republican, Democrat, independent, extremist. This is about coming together as a community. And, yeah, who, yeah. and, and how are we going to how are we going to do that? Well, let's leave right. politics aside and let's focus. You know, not only do we have COVID, we have people dying, we have crime. Right. Um, and the, and, and and when we're talking about crime, you know, that, that, you know, it is, it's just a, it is an epidemic of itself in and of itself as well. And um, we also see these high rates of recidivism and um, there's just um, maybe some sort of help that we need to, that we need to look at. And I know that, that those are some of the things that you're talking about. Um, we're, we're, we've got to turn now um, and move on. And uh, one of the topics that you brought up earlier when we were talking about um, uh, under COVID and economic recovery was the problems that we're having with, with our oil industry and the, and the money that we get from that industry for our state is, is underwater. And that's where our budget comes from. That's where the bulk of the money that our state has comes from. And so what we're, what, uh, what we need to be looking at. And one of the things that you're talking about is also is renewable energy, which, which could hopefully replace this missing money. So can you talk for just a minute, because we're running out of time on um, renewable energy? So, you know, New Mexico's renewable energy future is happening now. Uh, we're very blessed uh, with some of the best uh, renewable energy resources anywhere in our country. Um, I'm very happy that the governor took some bold steps in making a renewable energy uh, future uh, happen with the passage of the Energy Transition Act. Uh, pretty much the Energy Transition Act, um, you know, makes New Mexico a clean energy leader. Um, my dream is to see New Mexico as the renewable energy capital of the United States, which is very doable. Um, you know, we have um, abundance of, of, of uh, wind and solar. We have a lot of sun. We have, we have uh, a lot of uh, space to have farm wind farms, um, mm -hmm. and we have um, uh, we have a lot of opportunity, not only as space in our beautiful uh, geographical area, but also as a as an international port because we are a border state. So you know we need to make sure that our companies that are developing these uh, resources are training our children uh, for the for the workforce of our future. Um, in providing good jobs that uh, can help our economy thrive and provide good wages for our working families. Um, I'm going to definitely work hard and fight hard with the governor to make sure that our renewable energy um, future becomes a reality. Uh, climate change and global warming are real, um, and we need to protect Mother Earth for our children and our children's children. Yeah. And, and that, that is very true. And we're sitting right here in this wonderful state of ours that has, um, you know, the two resources that we need the most for mm -hmm. our future, which is um, abundant sunlight and way abundant wind. <laughs> and so those yeah. two things turned into energy. And we see it right now with Arizona um, taking advantage of our laws so that they can, you know, get our, our wind energy into Arizona. And we need to be taking a big look at that so that we can uh, be exporting these things 
and you know as you're uh, just as you're talking about so that we can um, uh, replace that that gas and oil um, money with this renewable um, that we have and that that's an exciting thing for our future and I'm, I'm so glad that you're looking at that absolutely and now that we are at the very end of the show um, I <laughs> I would like you to take a minute and just appeal directly to your voters and tell them why they need to be voting for you, why you're the choice. Thank you so much for uh, hosting me today and uh, you know the people of Senate District 20. Um, thank you for, for um, getting out there and vote. I know these are challenging times, but you know, my name's Idalia, the only Idalia in politics. I bring the experience, the progress, the change, and the diversity that we need um, to the New Mexico Senate. Um, I want your advice and guidance because ultimately it's not about me or my politics, it's about what you need. Um, I want you to call me and text me. I wanna have an open door at all times with you. I'm gonna virtually give you my business card, but you, my cell phone is 505-550-3868. Um, I do mean that. Call me, text me, because I want, I want to represent you accurately. Um, I want to continue to fight for our teachers, uh, fight for better health care for the most needy, you know, make our prescription drugs affordable. Let's get rid of that regressive social security tax. Let's combat crime. Let's realize New Mexico's renewable energy potential. Um, and I, the greatest honor of my life was to serve you as a state representative and I, I hope to earn that, that honor one more time as your next state senator um, of District 20. I invite you to join my campaign. My campaign's Working for Change. It's a bilingual campaign. In Spanish, is Luchando por Cambio. But please visit my website, idalia, the number four, nm.com, idalia4nm.com. Um, and please do call me and text me because I want your voice to be my, to be my voice. And with that, you know, I, please vote and call me anytime. Thank you so much. Well, we, we thank you so much for being here to uh, speak with us and to speak with our viewers. And um, uh, I, I just really thank you for being here. You know, oh, yeah. thank you. You know, thank you so much for everything that you're doing and for hosting this, you know, candidates. That's awesome. Yeah. And I want to um, thank all of you, our viewers, for, um, for watching the show. And I want to again appeal to all of you to get out there and look at your candidates very seriously. Look at their websites. We've got Idalia's website. It'll be down uh, below in the in the uh, comments below. And um, also take a minute to um, click the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of these important interviews with uh, candidates. And um, get out there and vote. Make sure you vote and make sure you vote in the primary season because the primary season is so important to make sure that the right candidates for your party are on the, the ballot in, in November. And again, thank you so much everybody for being with us.